More champagne, Mom? Julian asked, refilling my glass before I could respond. I smiled hesitantly, nervously glancing at my son and his fiancée. We were celebrating their recent engagement with an intimate family dinner, though an unsettled feeling stirred in my gut. To your happiness, Sienna purred, clinking her glass against mine. I nodded, taking a generous sip. There's something we wanted to discuss with you tonight, Julian said, exchanging a sly glance with Sienna. We're planning a huge engagement party next month, only the best for our perfect union. I chuckled anxiously. How wonderful for you both, but those parties can get quite pricey, can't they? Oh, we're not paying a thing, Sienna said with a wave of her hand. That's going to be your gift to us. I nearly choked on my champagne. I'm sorry, as Julian's mother, it's your duty to pay, Sienna continued. We expect you to contribute at least $25,000. Consider it an investment in your son's future. They couldn't be serious. $25,000 for a party, I said incredulously. Do you have any idea how unreasonable? Don't be ridiculous. Mom, Julian interrupted. You make good money, and you have all the inheritance money from Dad you've been hoarding. My husband's recent death, after battling cancer, was still an open wound. I recoiled at their callous remarks. That money is my nest egg for retirement and to pay these expenses, without even consulting me first, I said. Sienna rolled her eyes dramatically. Still harping on being consulted. Get over yourself already. You're the mother of the groom. This is what's expected. Shell out the cash and be grateful we're letting you contribute at all. You should feel honored we're even inviting you. Julian sneered. So write the damn check so we can start planning. I sat stunned, unable to comprehend their arrogance and disregard. I appealed once more to my son. Honey, be reasonable. You can have a lovely party without extravagant costs. Let's scale things back a bit. Julian slammed his fist on the table, rattling the glasses. I knew you would pull this cheapskate crap, he shouted. Some mother you are can't even support your only son. Hot tears sprang to my eyes as I took in their contemptuous glares. Perhaps I had spoiled my son rotten over the years, but I never imagined he could treat me with such cruelty and disrespect. I stood abruptly, disgusted by the two vipers lounging GRE in my home. I think you should leave now, I said quietly. Sienna leaped up and gripped my shoulders with sharp red nails. Don't even try rejecting your duty, she growled, her perfumed breath assaulting my nostrils. You either pay out, or you can kiss your relationship with Julian and any future grandchildren goodbye. I shook her off violently. Get out, I bellowed. Out of my house this instant. They stalked out without another word, but I saw them exchange a smirk. My heart dropped suddenly, realizing the engagement celebration I had hoped for would instead deliver nothing but greed, manipulation, and pain. The next evening, tired from a long day at work, but determined to settle the conflict, I prepared a simple pasta dinner, hoping to have an open discussion with Julian. I heard the front door slam and braced myself as loud footsteps echoed down the hall. Something smells good, Julian breezed into the kitchen, heading straight for the wine cabinet. My hopes lifted for a moment, then quickly faded as Sienna clip clopped in behind him, reeking of heavy perfume. To what do I owe the pleasure? I asked dryly, draining the pasta. You're going to love what we have planned, Sienna gushed, ignoring my tone as she rifled through her tacky designer handbag. We met with the wedding coordinator today and everything is set. All we need is one little thing from you. She flourished a folder stuffed with brochures and invoices. Just sign on the dotted line for the $50,000 wedding package. I froze, a chill running down my spine. $50,000. I gasped. For a single day celebration? That's outrageous. It's our special day, Julian whined. Don't I deserve the very best? I appealed to his conscience. Son, be reasonable. 
Let's scale back and have an intimate, meaningful ceremony instead of this, this circus. Sienna slammed the folder down. You incompetent hag. Who said this was open for discussion? She screeched. You will pay every penny to give your only son his dream wedding. Rage boiled up inside of me through gritted teeth. I replied, you entitled, nasty piece of mom, Sienna, stop. We all turned in surprise to see my daughter Harper standing firmly in the archway. I had been so focused on the confrontation I hadn't even heard her come in. Stay out of this, Dyke, Sienna snarled at my heavily tattooed, alternative graphic novelist daughter. It doesn't concern you. The hell it doesn't, Harper retorted. You don't talk that way to my mother. She crossed the room to stand protectively beside me. Under normal circumstances, I might have bristled at her interference, always trying to be the strong, independent matriarch. But at that moment, her solidarity was a lifeline, and I welcomed it. Julian threw his hands up melodramatically. I ask for one little wedding, and my entire family turns against me. He pointed an accusing finger at his sister. This is all your influence, filling Mom's head with delusions. She owes me this money and her loyalty. Harper folded her arms. Mom owes you nothing but basic respect, which clearly isn't reciprocated. She raised you single-handedly after Dad died, working tirelessly to give you every advantage, and this is how you repay decades of love and generosity. Shameless exploitation. My younger son had no response other than childish whimpers. Harper turned to me, her tattooed hand gripping mine firmly. You stand strong, Mom. Set boundaries and demand the respect you deserve. I've got your back. The knot in my chest loosened with immense relief. My daughter's stalwart support washed away my self-doubts. I would not bow down to these greedy, manipulative vultures for another minute. I drew myself up to full height, emboldened. You both have two choices. I addressed Julian and Sienna in a loud, clear voice. Treat me and my daughter with basic decency or get the hell out of our lives. Sienna opened her mouth, no doubt to spew more bile, but she caught Harper's murderous glare, thought better of it, and dragged a whimpering Julian out by his ear instead. I squeezed Harper's hand, my eyes brimming with grateful tears. How did I get so lucky to have a daughter like you? She smiled crookly, just being a chip off the old block. Now let's dish up that pasta and plot our next move. These asshats don't know who they're messing with. The next week crawled by with intense uncertainty. My phone buzzed incessantly with demanding texts and voicemails from Julian, raging when I didn't immediately call him back. I started screening my calls, not having the energy to deal with his abusive diatribes. When Saturday afternoon came, I decided to treat myself to a manicure to lift my spirits. As I sat relaxing while the technician groomed my nails, my phone buzzed yet again normally. I would ignore it, but glancing down, I saw it was a call from Julian's number. Curiosity got the best of me. Hi, honey, I answered cautiously. H, it's your witch of a mother, came Sienna's grating voice instead. My blood instantly started boiling. I was just about to hang up when I heard Julian's sneering tones in the background. Is the old bag actually taking your call? She's been dodging mine all week. There was a rustling sound followed by his voice coming clearly through the phone speaker. Mom, what the hell? I've been calling nonstop. Have you given any more thought to funding the wedding? The coordinator is breathing down my neck. I open my mouth to deliver a stern refusal, but Sienna's shrill voice cut me off. Oh, let it go already, H. She's clearly a lost cause. There was a slap as if she swatted his arm. Your mother is a dried-up, selfish prune. Once we're married, we'll change all the account passwords so she can never access our money. My eyes nearly popped out of my skull. Our money. There was more rustling, then Sienna's grating voice continued, H, why are we even still inviting her to the wedding? 
she'll just show up wearing some raggedy outfit from the clearance rack at TJ Maxx. Their raucous laughter boiled my blood, but worse was Julian's reply. Right, God, and you know she's going to be all whiny about contributing to our future, as if that puny life insurance payout could compare to what I make in a month. The hair on my neck bristled with outrage. The puny payout was nearly half a million dollars that I had invested for retirement, not blown on sports cars and designer clothes, like my prodigal son. Sienna scoffed loudly. Oh, please. We both know it was your daddy's money that set you up nicely at that firm. Your mother couldn't manage an allowance without a man's help. Hell yes to that, Julian cackled. And we put that inheritance money to way better use, like annual trips to Dubai, first class all the way. Their uproarious laughter made my blood boil. I stabbed the red phone icon with so much force I nearly cracked the screen. Those money-grubbing snakes. I had suspected their motive all along, but hearing their vile words firsthand rocked me to the core. My hands trembled with rage and indignation. I waved away the technician's concerned glances, threw a wad of cash on the counter, and raced for the door. I drove home in record time, burning up with the need to unload to Harper. Thankfully, she was already there waiting, her motorcycle parked haphazardly in the driveway. I burst through the front door, and she leaped up from the couch, startled by my frazzled state. The story came pouring out in an enraged torrent. Harper's green eyes blazed. Those conniving she, she yelled. I knew it all along. It was never about family or celebration. They just see you as a cash dispensary. I feel so betrayed and used, I said bitterly, choking back tears of frustration. My only son, how could he? Harper gripped my shoulders, her piercing gaze meeting mine. Mom, listen to me. We need to gather evidence and expose these cockroaches for who they really are. Her fist hit her palm with a decisive thwack. Contact the wedding coordinator. Get documentation of everything arranged without your consent. I'll dig into Sienna's background, too. I guarantee her family is loaded, despite those snake oil tears. We're going to shut this whole circus down. Hope and courage surged up in me again. My wonderful daughter was right. The time had come to take control and fight back. I pulled her in for a fierce hug, more grateful than ever for her integrity and strength. Let's go nail their greedy asses to the wall. Over the next two weeks, Harper and I gathered reams of evidence, exposing Julian and Sienna's deceit. As Harper uncovered, Sienna came from an extremely affluent family who were fully capable of funding their daughter's lavish tastes. Get this, her father owns a huge real estate investment firm, Harper had uncovered on LinkedIn. He could easily foot the bill for this circus of a wedding. Meanwhile, I obtained financial records from the wedding coordinator, showing the exorbitant expenses Julian and Sieno were trying to rack up on my dime. $75,000 and counting. We have everything we need to confront these swindlers, Harper declared, paperwork spread out on the dining table before us. Let's invite them over to review wedding plans and then drop the hammer on them. Her green eyes glinted. So I extended the bait, luring them over under the pretense of financing reconciliation and celebration details. The bait was taken instantly. Right on time, the doorbell screeched urgently. Before I could even answer, Julian and Sienna blew in, reeking as usual of arrogance and channel number five. Where's my check? Then Julian demanded right off the bat. Subtlety had never been his strong suit. Sienna elbowed him sharply, then plastered on a syrupy smile. Yes, do tell us the good news, she trilled. We have so many decisions to finalize for our big day. I gestured for them to take a seat under the table. Harper silently slid me the thick manila envelope containing the damning evidence. My heart pounded, but resolve hardened my nerves. I folded my hands tightly on the table. Before we discuss any further arrangements, I have a few concerns to address. 
I removed the paperwork from the envelope and fanned it out in front of me. According to the wedding coordinator, current expenses total $75,000. Care to explain? Sienna scoffed loudly. It's the wedding of the century. What do you expect? I expect honest communication around finances and shared responsibility, I replied evenly. For example, why don't Sienna's clearly variable parents contribute their fair share? After all, I pulled out a copy of her dad's business profile with a net worth in the tens of millions. They could easily afford this. Sienna blanched. Julian sputtered angrily. Leave Sienna's family out of this, my wedding, my financial support. He turned to point a finger at me, and you're my mother, so cut the check. Having expected denial, I calmly slid over the pile of invoices and contracts. Actually, these documents prove otherwise. They have my forged signature authorizing non-refundable down payments, totaling $155,000 so far. Care to explain that? Sienna gasped dramatically. Are you accusing us of fraud? From beside me, Harper suddenly slammed down an authoritative fist. Damn straight she is. My daughter's unexpected bellow stunned them into momentary silence. Harper seized the opportunity to append the rest of the Manila envelope's contents across the table. Bank statements, screenshots, phone records, irrefutable evidence of their lies and manipulation scattered dramatically before us. It's all here in black and white, Harper spat with unrestrained disgust. You snakes have been exploiting my mother's love and trust this whole time, never giving a damn about family bonds, just what you can swindle out of her. You were spying on us. Julian spluttered in outrage. Gathering evidence against your fraud, I corrected him. And now that everything is laid bare, you will cancel this sham wedding immediately. Sienna shot up out of her chair, nostrils flaring. How dare you, she shrieked. I will be marrying Julian with or without your money. She turned to my son with a pout. Back me up here. But Julian just sat there, pale and trembling, the magnitude of revelations rocking him into stunned silence. For once, the confrontation had rendered him speechless. Sienna rolled her eyes in disgust. You spineless mama's boy, forget it. She snatched her tacky designer handbag and stormed out, pausing in the doorway to deliver one final venomous glare. You'll regret this, she hissed at me. We won't forget. Then she flounced away in a cloud of channel. I stared evenly back at my shaken son. Nor will we, I said quietly. Now leave. He scrambled up hurriedly, but just before exiting, he mumbled a soft but clear threat. I'll make you pay for this the day. The moment I had been dreading arrived, Julian and Sienna's lavish wedding. I had hoped our confrontation would be the end of it, but these stubborn snakes pursued their farce nuptials anyway, blowing through even more of the retirement money I had entrusted in Julian's accounts. So here I sat, an unwilling participant in their twisted matrimonial circus. All around me, intoxicated guests gambled under ostentatious floral arrangements that cost more than my first car, the crowning glory an eight-tier fondant cake dripping with handcrafted sugar flowers. Julian and Sienna's smug faces towered above it all in a massive golden frame. My daughter Harper slouched next to me, clad in ripped jeans and combat boots, her pixie-cut green hair clashing spectacularly with the pastel bridesmaid dresses. We silently watched the overblown spectacle unfolding, barely concealing our disgust. Suddenly, the music transitioned to a bombastic wedding march. The crowd hushed in anticipation as Julian took his place under the altar's garish archway. My heart clenched, he looked so much like his father, tall and dashing in his tuxedo, beaming with charismatic charm. Not a trace remained of the petulant, greedy boy I had confronted just weeks prior. Radiant pride glowed from him as his bride floated down the aisle, dressed in a frothy designer gown I had no doubt charged to my credit card. Old memories and grief welled up. 
I had walked that same path over 30 years ago, naive and drunk on dreams of lifelong partnership and family, dreams that soured all too quickly. My faith in love and devotion had died alongside my husband, and now the son we created together slapped me in the face with the same callous disregard. As the ceremony droned on, a righteous rage simmered within me. I would not, could not bless this loveless union with my presence for another moment. I stood abruptly, my chair scraping loudly across the polished floor. All eyes turned to me. Harper grasped my hand supportively. I cleared my throat, meeting Julian's alarmed gaze. I apologize, but I cannot stay silent about this travesty. My voice rang out loud and clear. Murmurs rippled through the stunned guests. Julian flushed crimson, shrinking under my bold stare. Before he could muster a response, Sienna shoved past him, teeth bared and eyes spitting fury. How dare you interrupt my perfect day? She advanced toward me, manicured claws outstretched menacingly. I stepped back, recoiling from her vicious energy. Harper immediately confronted the enraged bride. Back off. My courageous daughter blocked Sienna's path, shielding me protectively. A hushed gasp echoed through the room. No one moved to intervene. Julian hung his head, refusing to meet my pleading gaze, offering no objection to his new wife's vitriol. My heart cracked. All illusions shattered forever. I no longer had a son, this greedy, spineless stranger before me would never again elicit my devotion or resources. I stepped around Harper to address the crowd. Let all bear witness on this hollow, pretentious sham of matrimony. My voice rang out boldly. I hereby refuse any further enabling of these snakes and revoke all ties. The farce ends now. I turned sharply for the exit, skirt swishing dramatically as I passed my shell-shocked son. I paused long enough to repeat the oft-hurled threat, you'll regret this, then I strode purposefully away without a backward glance, Harper right beside me, our shoes clacking a steady beat of solidarity. Out of that den of iniquity we emerged into watery sunlight, the doors cutting off Sienna's frenzied shrieks behind us. I took my first free breath in ages, relief washing over me as we climbed into Harper's waiting car. I patted my daughter's tattooed hand affectionately. Thank you for standing by me in there, I said. She grinned crookly. Are you kidding? I've waited years for a chance to tell Sienna off. As we peeled away from the lavish lies behind us, tears pricked unexpectedly, but for once, they were not from grief or regret. Because looking at my beautiful, loyal daughter smiling back at me, I knew I would never stand alone again. In the months following the cursed wedding, I changed phone numbers, moved residences, and transferred my remaining assets, cutting off all contact from Julian and his venomous bride. I heard through the grapevine that they had indeed gone through with their honeymoon in Dubai, no doubt funded by what was left of my retirement savings. Let them gorge themselves on luxury, I thought bitterly. It was only a matter of time before reality caught up. Sure enough, merely a year later, Julian came begging. I returned home one evening to find him hunched on my doorstep, unshaven and reeking of stale cigarettes. So great was my shock that I froze momentarily, packages slipping from my slack grip. Julian's bloodshot eyes registered a flash of embarrassment. He made a half-hearted attempt to help gather my things before mumbling, Hey, ma, can we talk? I brushed past him silently to unlock my front door, gesturing him stiffly inside. He hovered awkwardly as I put away groceries with deliberate slowness, bracing myself before finally addressing him. What do you want? I asked bluntly. Julian cleared his throat. I, uh, need your help just temporarily, he added, quick assurance as if that lessened the audacity. I'm between jobs right now and Sienna is pretty pissed that I can't cover her spending right now. Absolutely not. My sharp refusal halted his rambling excuses. 
I crossed my arms, rage and satisfaction warring within me. You made this bed. Lie in it. Julian gaped, unaccustomed to blunt denial from his doting mother. Come on, Maya, I'm desperate here. Can't you just spot me a few grand? He took a wheedling step forward. I'll pay you back, I swear. I stood unmoving as granite before my prodigal son. You had no intention of paying me back the first time you ransacked my accounts. I reminded him coldly. What makes you think I'd trust your hollow promises now? He flushed. Look, I was wrong before, okay, but I'm still your son. I sliced the air with one quick hand. You forfeited that privilege long ago. I have no son. I pointed one damning finger at his shocked face. Now you reap what you've sown. Get out. He opened and closed his mouth pathetically, but no argument emerged in the face of my unrelenting disgust. Shoulders slumped. Julian sculpted out the door and out of my life once more. About time the prodigal son got a taste of harsh reality. I quickly slammed the deadbolt before the wave of vindication swelling in my chest could morph into pity or regret. There could be no forgiveness for those who repeatedly bit the hand that fed them. Julian's wretched appearance proved karma now had him firmly in her jaws. The next I heard, his fancy tech startup had crashed and burned after less than a year. Apparently, my business connections had blacklisted the ungrateful leech. No investor would touch his dubious proposals with a ten-foot pole. Meanwhile, Sienna had fled back to Daddy's wallet after one too many conjugal disputes over unpaid bills. Last I heard, she was divorcing my son and riding some octogenarian sugar daddy in Monaco. I toasted their misery with Harper over cocktails that night as we laughed at rumors of Julian working fast food jobs under an assumed name. I knew not one iota of guilt would ever haunt me for his suffering. Karmaza, here's to many more years of her gnawing on those greedy bastards, Harper grinned, raising her martini glass. I cheerfully clinked my glass to hers. No truer words had ever been spoken. Over the next year and a half, Harper's career skyrocketed. More high-profile clients clamored for her distinctive tattoo style at artistic graphic novels. She even secured an agent and a publishing deal for her provocative memoir, a brutal tell-all recounting our family saga that was generating buzz before it even hit shelves. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, Harper relied on my sharp business instincts to manage her quickly ballooning finances. At her behest, I leveraged decades of investment experience to establish trademarks, negotiate publishing rights, and maximize profits. I swelled with pride watching my daughter's passions flourish under my careful cultivation. Soon, Harper was regularly turning up in edgy fashion magazines and sought-after graphic anthologies. She purchased a sleek downtown loft as her business base of operations, proudly showcasing the extravagant views she had earned solely through her prodigious talents. To celebrate Harper's rapid rise, I decided to host an intimate gathering of key supporters and collaborators at her swanky new digs. The catered affair would mark her official arrival as an artistic visionary and independent woman of means. Harper greeted guests with an uncharacteristic nervous energy as I directed caterers to artfully arrange free-flowing champagne and delicate canapes. You have nothing to worry over, I reassured my daughter as I straightened her smart blazer. Just be your normal captivating self. These people already adore you. Soon, the loft overflowed with Harper's vanguard inner circle, daring writers, leading publishers, edgy photographers, and even some A-list names from Harper's celebrity clientele made appearances to toast their favorite tattoo visionary. Pride swelled my chest to hear such powerful figures celebrating my exceptionally talented daughter. This was the launch party Julian could only ever fantasize about. Two short years ago, my family's name was tarnished by greedy failures. Now, through Harper's virtues, respect had not only been restored but elevated to an artistic elite status. Late into the evening, I stepped onto the balcony beside Harper, gazing over vibrant city lights. 
She squeezed my hand gently. None of this would be possible without you, Mom. You believed in me when no one else did, invested in me, fought for me. I'll owe you forever. I wrapped one arm around her slim, leather-clad shoulders, champagne flute clutched elegantly in the other hand. Nonsense, my brave darling. Your soaring success stems solely from your vision and daring talents. I swept one arm across the glimmering skyline before us. All this you manifested wholly on your own. I merely facilitated the business deals so you could freely create. Harper grinned crippily. Ah, yes, well, I clearly inherited your ruthless business savvy along with Dad's creative spirit. She playfully clinked her glass to mine to the dynamic duo, may we always prevail over vipers and thieves. I laughed brightly, heart swelling with maternal joy. My daughter and I had come through the crucible of greed and betrayal to now bask glowing in self-made success as the lively celebration carried on behind us. I silently offered one final toast upward to her beloved father. We had created a fine legacy after all, one sculpted purely from integrity, courage and toil instead of entitlement or manipulation. That legacy now towered as a gleaming testament to morality for all the Julians of the world to gaze upon with envy. For decades to come, over the next two years, Harper Star continued to ascend in a brilliant, trailblazing trajectory. Meanwhile, I heard through mutual contacts that Julian languished in obscurity and mounting debt. His lavish lifestyle sustained itself for a while on credit before the House of Cards inevitably collapsed. The rare times Julian's name surfaced, it was tied to seedy gossip rags and drunken tabloid scandals, from Siena's very public affair to Julian getting fired from a car dealership for defaulting on payments. Karma seemed intent on grinding my prodigal son into the dirt. I ignored the lurid headlines with a quiet sense of satisfaction, confident I would never lay eyes on him again. By now I had retired from corporate leadership to focus on passion projects, indulging in artistic hobbies, volunteering with disadvantaged youth, and planning leisurely global adventures. I decided it was also time to downsize into a lower maintenance home. After a prolonged search, I found my perfect oasis, a private bungalow in a picturesque coastal senior community. Mature trees and vibrant gardens welcomed me each morning as I embarked on scenic nature walks with dear widowed friends. The idyllic setting and social kinship brought me a sense of peace I hadn't realized was missing. Meanwhile, Harper had also found her soul's counterpart, a brilliant software developer named Riley, who adored her vibrant spirit. I instantly detected true partnership potential upon meeting Riley, my instincts proved correct. Just months after moving in together, Harper excitedly presented me with news of their engagement. I whooped joyfully when she flashed the unique geometric ring Riley had custom designed. My darling girl, I exclaimed through happy tears, I'm thrilled you found someone deserving of your tremendous heart. The private garden wedding ceremony Harper described echoed my own intimate vision three decades prior. No showy fanfare, just profound, lifelong commitment, led by cherished community. I clasped Harper's hand, overcome with emotion at how perfectly she was manifesting her father's and my unrealized dreams. Later, during wedding planning over tea and biscuits, Harper hesitated before broaching the subject I knew she would. Mom, about inviting Julian, I waved one hand briskly. Let's not sully your special day by entertaining that notion. Harper bit her lip. I just can't help but pity him, you know. He's clearly a miserable screw-up, but still family, even if he doesn't deserve it. I wonder if including him would be the right thing. She trailed off uncertainly. Recognizing my daughter's enduring compassion, even for those who least warranted it, I patted her hand reassuringly. You need never compromise your kind principles. If some small mercy for Julian eases your mind, I can tolerate his presence just this once. 
Harper exhaled in relief and squeezed my hand gratefully. You're the best mom. I knew you'd understand. The sentimental moment was sharply interrupted by my ringing cell phone. Glancing down, I was stunned to see Julian's name flash across the screen. Months had passed since his last desperate, drunken voicemail, pleading for money. Face grim, I silenced the call. Speak of the devil, I remarked dryly. Harper shook her head. He never stops trying to warm his way back in. But don't worry, Mom, after the wedding, you'll never have to deal with this garbage again. I smiled gently at my daughter's protective tone. She was right. The time had long passed for me to entertain Julian's self-pitying overtures. I now had all I ever needed right here in my tranquil life, surrounded by those whose souls nurtured mine. No redirects from a toxic past could ever breach that blessing. I patted Harper's hand resolutely. Onwards and upwards, my dear. Now, tell me more about the lovely flower arrangements you envisioned.